having looked at the last video, it becomes relatively easy to come to the conclusion that we don't really know what is going on. We're not really paying attention to anything other than the preconceived notions that we have in the categorised pigeonholes in our own mind that enable us make our lives predictable, that enable us make sense of our lives, or perhaps nonsense. One of the biggest nonsenses that I want to talk about in this video is the whole idea, notion or illusion of stress. Now, you may find it strange that I use such words in describing what is actually killing people as we speak. But if we begin to dissect the mechanics of stress, we will begin to realise that, in fact, stress isn't. That's the end of that sentence, by the way. Something could happen before your eyes and my eyes. Some event could take place that would immediately motivate you but that would immediately stress me out. One man's or woman's stress is another's motivation. Stress is a uniquely personal thing. If stress is a uniquely personal thing, and we're going to explore how that is, then you immediately have to come to the conclusion that stress isn't, as I said a minute ago. The problem is that even though stress is an illusion, the effects of stress are really, really important and unfortunately damaging. Before we explore how stress works, we need to explore why we're actually wired for stress. And when we look at this, you'll understand that there are very good reasons why we are wired for stress. and. Just like in the second video we explored why we developed automaticity and categorization, the reason we developed stress goes all the way back to evolutionary times. Say you and I were out walking in the bushes, paying no attention to anything because we were doing everything routinely, habitually, blindly and automatically, and suddenly the bushes rustled. The rustling of the bushes would have our immediate attention because we are hardwired to be startled. We are hardwired to suddenly shine that attentional spotlight of ours on something that could potentially threaten our ability to make it back to camp tonight, threaten our ability to make it through the day. In evolutionary times, this is what enabled us survive. This is what enabled us thrive. The startle or stress response is the most fundamentally automatic facility that we are wired for. What does it do? It immediately ensures that all of our attention is devoted to something that could kill us. We then have to make a snap decision as to whether we're going to fight this or run away. Regardless of which choice we take, we need to immediately ensure that we are fully kitted out for the task in hand. And what that means is that the stress response, through releasing cortisol into the system, immediately increases our heart rate, heightens our blood pressure, and constricts the capillaries in our circulatory system, all to ensure that highly oxygenated blood gets to the necessary muscles or muscle groups quickly. That means we can either fight or run away. In this tense situation we don't need our digestive system and we don't need our immune system so both of those are switched off. And the other thing that I should mention because it ensures that blood gets to the required places quickly is that our system produces bad cholesterol because that in that moment of necessity, slicks the internal walls of the circulatory system. 10,000 years ago, this was perfect. Suddenly, I had a load of highly oxygenated blood in my legs and I could run away really quick. I didn't need to worry about whether I got indigestion from last night's dinner or whether I was going to catch a cold next week. The stress response ensured that I just made it out of there and survived and lived to fight another day. 
perfect 10,000 years ago. A disaster waiting to happen in our current 21st century lives. The World Health Organization believes that barring a pandemic, or I suppose a meteor hitting the earth, the one thing that will kill more people in the developed world in the 21st century than anything else is stress. Because every time I see a boss I don't like, or every time I read a bank statement that actually tells me what I already know, or every time something goes wrong at work or in the business or out on the farm, every time that something like that happens, the stress response will immediately be triggered. And what the World Health Organization says is that it is low-level, background, continuous stress that is killing us. Not a sudden, major flash of stress because a tree is about to fall on us, or because an electricity cable is about to fall over on our tractor. It's the low-level, background, everyday stuff that does our head in, that is doing our lives in. Research shows that low-level background stress is directly correlated to coronary heart disease and premature death. More recent research is beginning to establish that low-level background stress is directly related to the onset of a number of different types of cancer. If you choose to be stressed, you are choosing to slowly kill yourself. Now we've come back to the point that stress is a choice. It is an automatic choice. As I said, the startle or the stress response is the most automatic response that we have hardwired into us. But it is a choice nevertheless. Let's see how that works. I arrive into work cool, calm and collected. Now not many people do that for a start, but let's assume that you arrive into work cool, calm and collected and the phone rings and you suddenly learn that something that you hadn't anticipated has gone wrong. Your cognitive appraisal system will immediately put that in a pigeonhole and decide whether that is a potential threat to what it is you want to achieve today or indeed to your livelihood for example, or whether it is not. If it decides it is a threat, the next thing it will do is will decide whether or not you are up to dealing with the threat as an individual. Now, as we'll explore later on in these videos, when it comes to understanding ourselves, we often misunderstand ourselves and unfortunately we have more perceived inadequacies or as ordinary, normal, crazy people than we have perceived strengths. So there is a good possibility, and this is happening to people in the workplace every day, that I will decide that A, this is a threat, whatever has just happened in that phone call, and B, I'm not up to dealing with the threat, so I need to do something else about it, I need to become immediately stressed, I need to release all those chemicals into my system, I need to increase my heart rate, increase my blood pressure, increase my cholesterol, and turn more off my immune and digestive systems. Now you know stress is related to digestive problems or ulcers. We already know that very often when we're stressed and suddenly take a few days off to chill out we get a cold or a flu because our immune system has been down. And we all know that hypertension, high blood pressure and heart disease are directly related to stress. But the cognitive appraisal process that actually brings on the stress response is something that's going on in here. It is not something that's going on outside. It's me trying to pigeonhole what is going on outside and making a mess of it and making a mess of my perceived ability to actually deal with it. It is a choice. It is a personal choice, uniquely personal to my way of seeing the world and my way of seeing me and my abilities to cope. Now you might say to yourself, if it is such a mo an automatic choice, surely there is nothing I can do about it. But in the second video in this series, we discovered that we're wired not to focus, with good reason. Now we have discovered that we're wired to be stressed, with good reason. But what we will discover as we go, is that we can actually take some simple steps to, and I'm going to say this slowly, rewire ourselves. And I'm not talking about that in kind of an offhand or imaginary way. The wiring in our heads actually restructures itself as we'll discover. So, 
if I take some of those little steps, I can actually ensure that I don't trigger the most fundamentally automatic response that is wired into me, the one that brings about stress. So, what we have in this video is a quick snapshot, a very quick run through the whole issue of stress. The key point to take away from this video is that stress is not a reality. Stress is a choice that we all make. Stress is something that is built into us, but through developing our ability to pay conscious attention, to control our attentional spotlight, we can simply choose not to be stressed, or in fact choose just to be present, so that the whole process of evaluating whether or not I'm stressed simply doesn't happen at all. But we need to keep going. We need to keep understanding what is wrong with us before we can tweak it just a little bit to ensure that not only do we get it right, but that it enables us to achieve all our objectives almost effortlessly.